Good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor and a privilege um, to introduce um, this next presentation to you. Um, my name is Samantha Ivory. I am a member of the Teaching and the Race Planning Team, and here at Emerson, I serve as the Director of Equity Initiatives in the Office of Internationalization and Equity. Tell you a little bit about this fabulous group. The Dean's Fellows for Racial Equity and Leadership Development are a group of students who partner with their deans, the vice provost, and other administrators on this campus. Um, and they were selected um, to be a part of Emerson's efforts to ensure that our values are reflected in our pedagogy, our co-curricular programming, and all academic initiatives. The fellows work closely with the faculty, BIPOC students, and other organizations to facilitate dialogue and actions that promote racial justice, equity, healing and inclusion within the academic environment. This year, the culminating project for our fellows from the School of the Arts will be a two-day art symposium in March and our School of Calm and uh, our Institute Fellows are working on a curriculum mapping project within the School of Communications, looking at the courses that are being taught um, under the auspices of equity, racial, racial equity and understanding, diversity and inclusion. And so as we talk about teaching truthfully about race and racism in the academy, our students are doing that work with us. They are doing it fabulously. Um, they are wearing their own design shirts. I'm so proud of them. Um, and so I want to also say, um, before I close and invite them to the stage, we will be opening applications for this fellowship. Um, so look um, for emails from your deans. The applications will open on Monday the 20th. The deadline is March the 6th. Um, it's very easy. It's all in Google. You just upload, type in, and boom, there you go. Um, so without further ado, I would like to welcome our Dean's Fellows for Racial Equity and Leadership Development. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, my name is Kwon Chen, for those who don't know me. Uh, I'm also one of the Dean's Fellows from Barber Institute, but I work with uh, School of Clouds very closely, um, and along with all the other things that do on campus. But today we'll be talking about identifying DEI at work at Emerson. Um, next slide, please. So first of all, we'll be going through a quick introduction of all our fellows. We'll come in and introduce ourselves. Then we'll have two projects that we'll be talking about. First is our DEI and faculty recognition. Um, we'll be talking about how we landed on this, our process of doing it. And the second, as Amanda mentioned, is our big semester-long project, which is mapping DEI and courses at Emerson. Uh, we're also doing some data collection and how we came up with those con conclusions. Uh, then we'll end up with a little bit of where you can find us, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, as I introduce myself, my name is Bernie Chung, class of 23, graduating soon. Um, please fulfill my role and consider applying to the Dean's Fellowship. And uh, my name is Dale Labino. I'm a common studies major here. Um, I'm just going to introduce uh, Sharon Botang, who is not coming on stage with us at the moment, uh, but she'll be around hosting a bunch of different events as well. And Laura Gonzalez, who unfortunately isn't here as well, uh, who is one of the communication uh, disorder majors. Hi everyone, my name is Clarissa Cadillo. I am the class of 24. I'm a political communications major with a minor in pre-law and dance. And I am one of the Dean's Fellows for Communication Studies. And I'm just so happy to see everyone here today. And I'm really excited for you to all learn about what we've been doing. Hi everyone, my name is Kristen He, and I'm also part of the Dean's Fellowship for School of Calm. And since all of us is about to graduate things soon, so we're really looking forward for more people to apply and contribute DEIA effort into the campus. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is our DEIA faculty recognition. 
And so basically, when we were first coming together trying to figure out what we wanted to do to improve Emerson, we also wanted to acknowledge the fact that there are some professors, there are some faculty and people in the School of Calm who really have made an effort to go above and beyond and make sure that their classrooms are safe space, inclusive spaces, and just encouraging global perspectives and diverse voices. So we basically decided to create our DIA faculty recognition and what we looked for were faculty nominations that had incorporated global perspectives, created a safe space, enhanced accessibility, and just encouraged DEIA topics. So to get this information and to do this, what we did is we created a survey. To start, we all came together, we brainstormed and tried to come up with some criteria. Um, these are not winners, these faculty members, but they're more so models that we want other professors to be able to learn from. So we basically got together, we created some different things that we've seen in our classroom settings. We came together and we said, what are some things that we've had in our classrooms that have really encouraged diversity, made us feel safe, and just professors that we have seen go above and beyond. From there, we created criteria in places where we saw that some of our ideas aligned, and then from there, we created a survey. So our survey, we wanted it to be short and comprehensive so that people, you know, wouldn't have to spend too much time on it because, you know, we're all very busy. So we created three questions that were a scale, uh, one being very little and five being, they, this professor did this a great amount. So our first question was, this professor goes above and beyond the diversity statement in the syllabus. The second one was, this professor welcomes conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the classroom. Question three was, what course is this? And the fourth question was to have them share in an open-ended way any other things they wanted to include. For example, we had, maybe this professor shows concern for accessibility. This professor provides meaningful DEI videos and lectures and readings that really stuck with us. So this survey went out on February 7th, and from there we have already had a really good amount of submissions. Um, it's been really awesome to see that there's some professors that are being mentioned more than once by many students. And again, it really just affirms and shows us, again, that there are so many professors that are doing the work. There's so much more work to be done. This is a predominantly white institution. The School of Communication faculty also has kind of a disparity in who's teaching. But there are some people that are going above and beyond, and we can't wait to share who those people are and get a chance to recognize this faculty and help them just show other professors a model of how to really create that kind of classroom space. So right now I'm going to talk about the mapping project that we're also doing. We're basically taking an overview of school calm syllabus and really create visual mapping for the courses um, to highlight some of the places that professors select their material from for either required reading or course material. Our goal is really just to surface helpful example of learning content and experience that acknowledge and uplift DIA. So as we take you into our actual tool that we've created, the apparatus which we'll be using to dissect classes, we want to make sure that we emphasize this is coming from an asset framing perspective. We're not trying to see the deficit in classes. We're not trying to uncover things that classes lack. We're trying to see what they have and how we can grow on that. So we've taken this uh, rubric essentially and kind of started off at one and worked our way to five and scoped through different syllabi to see how does this represent who we are in classes, how does it engage with topics in the ways that we want to talk about DEI issues, and furthermore, as we kind of gauge through the different syllabi, not only taking in consideration content, but also the authors that are informing our classrooms. Um, and you'll see with Prini next, uh, that's the actual visual aspect of our mapping project, and taking part not only what we're learning, but who we're learning from. So in case you're like me, who's a big nerd, uh, and does economics and data science at Emerson, uh, you get to do a couple of things like map stuff like this. 
So basically, I took an example of a class I'm taking this semester called Behavioral Economics. It's a sweet spot because it's, it's also in the marketing department as well as uh, in the School of Liberal Arts, in our institute. Um, and uh, I took a collection of all the sources that were being used in that classroom. And believe it or not, it spanned all the way across from Flint, Michigan, where we were talking about uh, the water crisis and how that can lead to behavioral economics issues and how uh, they, they were solved using nudges to all the way in Indonesia where the Lamarella whale hunting tribes are uh, completely immune to these economic models. Um, and these were kind of the few things that we started to realize that there's perspective that you can bring into the classroom that's very broad, very global, and will also let you to realize that, okay, you know, maybe we should be breaking barriers, thinking about outside the box. Uh, but, as you can see in the next slide, uh, we have, we did the very brief overview of mapping from uh, introductory courses in the schools of thought. And, um, as you can see, most of it was very localized towards the Western world. Um, and not that it's a bad thing, but obviously there's more room for courses and uh, as well as sources that we can gather from to like grow and be exposed to various other situations, different parts of the world. Um, I will put a disclaimer, we did only look at uh, CC100 courses, uh, so they are very introductory level courses. Uh, but as our mapping project progresses, uh, we might be able to look at how this looks in a much broader scale. Um, not only that, we'll also be able to see like what courses offer different perspectives. Like you, once this whole project is completed, it will be online on the web. Everyone can go and check it out. It's like, okay, I took this class. Where have I learned from? Um, and that's, I feel like, a true mark of uh, Emersonian is to be able to access all these resources. Um, and bring global perspectives, not only into the classroom, but outside where you go after graduation to the workplace. Um, that being said, you can also find us Dean's Fellows doing a bunch of other stuff. Um, we did a reflection on Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, I Have a Dream. Uh, me, as well as Laura Gonzalez, uh, provide our perspectives on uh, a bunch of other faculty members who are also involved. Um, Sharon is also hosting the Black Experience in News Media, February 22nd. Uh, please go check it out. And also, like we have been mentioning throughout the presentation, please consider applying. It's a great opportunity, and we'd love to see you. Thank you, and we'll turn it off to. We just wanted to give a really big thank you to Takesha Morgan, Sam Avery, and Dr. Tony Pender because without their guidance and leadership, we would not be able to Thank you very much. Hey y'all, I'm Sean. I'm a theater education and performance major. I use the he and his series of pronouns. Hi, I'm Lena Zidane. I'm a VMA major. I use the she series pronouns. Hi, I'm Jeannie Thompson. Um, I'm pronouns. I'm not sure what's in the major. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and I'm a media studies major with a double minor in marketing communications and Africana studies. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm Daphne. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a creative writing major and have minors in publishing and music history. Hi guys, my name is Jake. I'm a theater BFA uh, with a minor in women, gender, and sexuality studies. I'm also in the Honors College. Hi, I'm Gabriella. Um, I'm a senior WLP and also a minor in women's gender and sexuality studies. Hi, I'm Kyoko Ito. Um, I use she, her pronouns, a VMA major, and a dance and writing minor. Woo. 
And I forgot to mention my major, but I am a theater performance major. And we are the Dean's Fellowship for Racial Equity and Leadership Development. <laughs> Before we get into the main point and our um, highlight. Before we get into the um, main um, point and our highlight of our presentation, um, I just wanted to give a little bit of a background story of our origin story, where we come from, um, and who we are, and what we want to do on this campus. So the Dean's Fellowship Program for Racial Equity and Leadership Development is an initiative of the Office of Academic Affairs and the Dean's Council, and it was created to help support personal and professional development um, for undergraduate students working towards a more equitable and just Emerson, just Emerson. And I can speak on the School of the Arts and the things that we've done so far to um, initiate our goals and bring what we want to do on campus. Um, last semester, the School of the Arts went through an extensive research and process to find an artist who really represented our goals and what we want to bring to the campus, which is inclusion, diversity, and representation of black and brown students on campus. And the way that we did that is through interviewing an artist and finding um, who embodies what we want to bring on the campus. And the artist that we found last semester was David Tang Olsen. And if you go to Paramount on the third floor, you'll see a beautiful big mural that really embodies what we really wanted to highlight. So please check that out. That was our first big project because we're two and a half years in. Yeah. I should say, we're two and a half years in. So um, that was really big for us and I'm really proud of us. So, um, what, thank you. <laughs> um, so just so you guys are um, in unison with us, the things that we are going to be talking about is first you'll get to know us more on a deeper level. We're going to be talking about why we joined the Dean's Fellows. Um, and our background stories, as well as the main event, the Embrace Your Heart, Our Arts, Hearts Festival, um, and why we're doing it and what we really want to bring onto the campus. So we can go in this order, starting with Gabriella. Um, do you want to mind? This one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabriella, and um, why I joined Dean's Fellows is actually a professor recommended me to the program. She sent me an email, be like, check this out, and that was my sophomore year, and my freshman year, I used to run a podcast on campus called The Dark Side, and I'm not sure if anyone in here knows or remembers it, <laughs> um, but sadly, due to COVID, it wasn't really able to continue, so I, when I got this email about the Dean's Fellows, I thought this was a really great way to still kind of continue my involvement towards racial equity on campus, and ever since then, it's just been home. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I joined the Dean's Fellows, uh, particularly for a few reasons. Uh, I really wanted to contribute to sustainable and representative change within the Emerson College community. Um, it's really hard being the only black girl in a lot of your classes, and I really wanted to find out if there were ways um, to change that, to further improve our educational spaces on campus, our extracurricular spaces on campus, and I found that the Dean's Fellowship was a great way to do that. Um, so that was one of the reasons. Uh, one of my second reasons was also to showcase that it is possible to be busy, of course, <laughs> but young, black, educated, and involved. I also feel really strongly about developing creative initiatives that promote immersive, unique, and qualitative ways of strengthening DEIA development. And the Dean's Fellowship, although we're new, we're doing that and we're continuing to improve on strategies and methods of doing so. So I'm just really proud of all of our hard work. Um, these students are insanely talented and they care a lot about Emerson. So just give them a round of applause, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so with that, I recognize that the Student of Arts Fellows Group was a space and an opportunity to do all of these things all in one place. And through this fellowship, I've found friends, I've found faculty, resources, and incomparable experiences that support making Emerson more inclusive, and not just for us fellows, but for everyone. That was so <laughs> um, So similarly to Jeannie, the reason why I joined the Dean's Fellow was because I come from a very diverse background. 
I grew up in a small neighborhood in South Boston where everyone looked like me, everybody talked like me, act like me, and I never really immersed myself into an environment other than that. And I knew in my senior year of high school that there would be cultural shock, they talked about it, um, and but I don't think I was really prepared to be at a PWI like Emerson and really feel as though I'm not worth being here, I'm not um, welcomed here, um, and also that I just felt big imposter syndrome. And I didn't realize um, how big that would take a toll on my mental health. But when I saw the Dean's Fellowship application, I didn't really know much about it, I just saw racial equity, inclusion, diversity, those words popped out to me and I was like, I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to apply. <laughs> so I applied, and now I'm here. <laughs> um, and it was the best decision I could have made because like Jean said, I've made friends, I've gotten to know more students of color on campus, and that othering feeling that I once felt didn't go away completely, but it went away for the most part, and I don't think I could have gone on without these people right here, and especially Tony and Takesha and Sam, who have really uplifted me and motivated me and supported me in ways that I didn't know I needed supported support in. So, yeah, if you really want to join the Dean's Fellowship, I think you should. Um, you will be loved here. Um, so, like the slide says, I'm Daphne. Um, I joined the G Dean's Fellows because I actually got an email from Kim McLaren after presenting to the Board of Trustees, and she really uh, recommended it to me. She said this is something that I know you would want to be a part of. It's a really great opportunity, and uh, similar to Beyonce, I saw that it included racial equity and inclusion, and I was like, I'm in. Um, that's something that I've really been trying to uh, work towards at Emerson, really uh, promoting those spaces on campus, because it's something that I'm really passionate about, we all are, and I just knew that I'd be able to make a difference doing this. So that's kind of why I joined. And I'm really lucky because I've gotten to experience uh, so many different perspectives and learn from everyone. We've gotten to do amazing workshops and host this amazing festival that you're going to learn a little bit more about later. And I also get to do it with my best friend and roommate, Kyoko, uh, which is amazing. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Sean. Um, to understand why I want to be a Dean's Fellows, I'm going to have to take y'all back real quick to my freshman year. Um, my freshman year, I had the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity, to be a part of a student-written film called A Trial of Errors that was written and directed by a student here named McKinnon Campbell, and that was assistant directed. Yes, it was in too! That was assistant directed by Jasmine Hawkins. Um, two wonderful students on campus who are doing amazing work in advocacy. Um, one of the things that they're doing is that they've been working their entire Emerson careers is finding a space to put on and perform a musical called Jelly's Last Jam. Woo! Woo! Sure to check it out. Sure to check it out. Um, they have been struggling their entire college career to find a space to put this on in. So one of the reasons that why I wanted to join the Dean's Fellows is to show and to create more spaces for students of color to celebrate and to express themselves. And I hope that uh, as we continue our presentation, that y'all sh that that will show and that that will shine. Um, hi, I'm Kyoko. Um, my reason, um, selfishly, the reason why I joined was because I kind of just wanted to create like another, a second home here. Um, coming from Tokyo, Japan, it's kind of inevitable that my, like, my home is like kind of far away and I can't like go there, like go back so easily. Um, and so I kind of just wanted to create another home that is very close and I can like feel safe and comfortable in my own skin and the background that I hold. Um, and I just remember like the first meeting, I just like, I felt super comfortable. Um, and I just like got to know all these people so well. Um, and now that I'm kind of in this community, my goal is to represent this diverse group and kind of um, be the face of future Emerson students, um, like people, uh, students of color in the future, to see this group and feel like they belong here. Um, and so yeah, that's also another reason is because of my best friend. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, everyone. Um, a lot of the other fellows have unfortunately taken the reasons why I joined, but I will say them in my own words as best as I can. Um, uh, my reason for joining the fellowship was twofold, the first of which um, coming to a predominantly white institution my freshman year when there was still a little bit of COVID stuff going on. Um, I couldn't find uh, a community of people of color uh, to be a part of, and I knew that through this fellowship that I would automatically find a community, which is exactly what has happened. Um, and I've made friends that I will love and cherish for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Um, and the second reason that I joined the fellowship um, is because I wanted to uplift and uh, uh, create space for students of color, and specifically artists of color uh, in the School of the Arts, uh, to create, uh, to make work that they're proud of, uh, to create work that can be seen, which is exactly what this festival is doing, which is why we're so excited to talk to you about it. Um, hi, I joined the Dean's Fellows because I heard about it through a good friend of mine who was a Dean's Fellow last year, Karunji Tips. And um, I know she, she found a wonderful sense of community among the Dean's Fellows, and as a North African immigrant, I, uh, my experience in the U.S. so far has been fairly alienating, and I was looking for that community. And um, I also wanted to be part of a resource to uplift um, students of color, BIPOC students, as they navigated race and identity in a primarily white institutions. I wanted to celebrate, um, give visi visibility through celebration, and uh, that's what we're doing here at the Dean's Fellows, and that's uh, what our festival is about. So, yeah. Aren't they amazing? <laughs> I love them. So now, to introduce the lovely Sherbano. They couldn't be here today, but they did send me their bio and some things that they want you all to know about them. So they are in the class of 2024, our creative writing major, and in addition to on-campus involvement with um, SOA fellows, they are a fiction reader for, I think it's Fernica Magazine, or Wernica Magazine, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this is what they do, love them, and just sending them a bunch of love right now. So what you all have been waiting for, um, this semester, the School of the Arts are putting on a festival called the Embrace Our Hearts Festival, and now I'm going to hand it over to my fellow Dean Fellows to talk about what it is, how it relates to the Fellows, and why we are hosting this series of events. So Lena and I are a part of the VMA um, SOC Film Festival that we're going to hold on Friday, March 24th at 7 p.m. at SBC Theater. Um, we wanted to do this film screening because we thought that we wanted to create this opportunity for students of color to showcase their films and have their voices heard and also to value each other's works as well. Um, and so we encourage any of you guys um, who identify as a person of color to submit any short films under 20 minutes that you have made in the past two years um, for a chance to get it screened at Emerson. If you want to add anything else. Yeah, um, it's not a competitive festival. The idea really is uh, visibility through celebration. So it's a moment of coming together as a community and enjoying each other's work and company. Daphne and I, WLPs, <laughs> we created um, basically like a little like book sale and open mic night. And this will be on Sunday, March 26th, here in this exact room, SBC Theater, um, at 8 p.m. And we created this so then that way students on campus have the ability to not only like have like direct access to works by authors of color, but also have the opportunity to read their own work and really highlight their artistry. Um, and we have already opened up submissions, and submissions are going to be open until the, you know, March 10th. And we're really, really excited to hear everyone's work and also to have people be able to read um, some of our authors. <laughs> but yeah, here's some of the, the books that we have chosen um, The Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison, um, Love Boat. Tai Pai um, by Abigail Hing Wen, An American Sunrise by Joy Harjo, and The Lesbianas Guide to Catholic School by Sonora Rice. 
And I'm the lead for the performing arts event, which we're going to call Into the Spotlight. Uh, everyone go, ooh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Into the Spotlight is our performing arts event. Um, this is an opportunity for us to really celebrate ourselves and to express ourselves creatively and to show off our, all of our diversity and express all that in an amazing way. So in that, uh, any type of live performance is allowed to submit. So that includes uh, monologues. Uh, if you sing, come sing a song. Group, uh, group auditions are welcome. Sketch comedy, stand-up, whatever you do, we want to see y'all perform. Um, right here is the audition form to submit. In-person auditions will be February 26th, but they're not mandatory. Uh, just fill out the audition form in order to submit. Um, and I'm really excited because this event is going to take place in the Cutler Majestic on March 25th. And I don't know if y'all uh, remember earlier when I was talking about Jelly's Last Jam, but I had an opportunity to sit on, in on Jelly's Last Jam's uh, first rehearsal. And the first thing that I did after the perform after their rehearsal was go up to Jasmine and McKinnon and I told them about this event and I told them that I would love for them to perform their final number of Jelly's Last Jam of this Yay! event. So, So please come check it out. Um, after the event, there will be a catering session, uh, which Beyonce is putting together. So I hope y'all can submit and spread the word around, all right? Aren't they amazing? <laughs> um, this is totally um, just made up right now, but if Jeannie and Jake, do you guys also want to talk about your involvement in the festival as well? Because we're all doing something, guys, all of us. It's a big collective group thing. Like um, Sean mentioned, I'm in charge of catering, which has been a learning experience. <laughs> it takes a lot to put on a festival. I didn't know that. It's, you know, food is really important. So that's what I learned from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi. I, I didn't do too much. I'm not going to gas myself too. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jake, uh, Minseo, Kwan, who's not here, they are in LA right now? Question mark? Yeah. Yes, yeah. They're in LA right now, so shout out to Dean's fellow school of arts, because we are everywhere, y'all. Not just in Boston. Get it right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Jake and I, as well as Minseo, have been kind of collaborating on the marketing materials for this event. Um, so designing graphics, posters, flyers, infographics, I mean, you name it, and Jake and I, as well as Minseo, um, have just done a really wonderful job at maintaining that responsibility and ensuring that we develop a really cohesive branding for this. Um, so all of the design stuff that you see has been done by us, um, and you will shortly see flyers around campus along with QR codes. So as all of our lovely fellows have mentioned, please make sure to spread the word with your networks, your friends, your other talented creative partners and comrades. Um, we really want to make sure that we highlight as many works as possible, um, and that will not be possible without your involvement. So please give everyone a round of applause. Um, it was not easy, but we are really here to support you guys um, and to make sure that you have things that you can put on your resume, things that you can tell internships, things that you can get jobs with. Um, we just really want to promote visibility across campus in every way possible. I also wanted to shout out Catherine. She's been super helpful. And Dean Sabal, thank you. Two more people at the castle, Diego and yeah. Megan. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, please, please show out to the festival because without you guys, it won't be great and we want it to be great. So, come. Um, so, now I'm going to talk about our why, the reason why we are putting on this festival, and what we hope you all as students gain from it. So the first two things that we want to highlight and um, start with this festival is to initiate community engagement within the Emerson community as well as enforcing togetherness. As BIPOC students, it, as we've seen and heard from everyone up here, and I'm pretty sure it's a, um, a familiar feeling without, with, through in um, BIPOC students on campus at a PWI or at any institution, 
um, there's that sense of loneliness, um, imposter syndrome, and not feeling as though you have people on campus to go to. Um, so we really want to initiate that and eliminate that feeling, as well as sharing art in its many forms, and as well as developing an artistic space for students of color on campus, because we all come from different backgrounds, we all have our own stories, we probably have the same stories or similar experiences, but they're all important to share and all important to highlight. So this is what we want our festival to highlight and bring to this campus. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you everyone up here for having been Before we open up for questions, um, Rob and Brent, would you just stand? Just stand. You don't have to say anything. Stand up. All right. Rob, 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 Rob. Um, and Catherine, would you please stand? Okay. And then Tony. So that, that's really the full team. Um, you've heard a lot from the Dean's Fellows about why they applied and, um, and why they um, have been enjoying their experience. Um, I want to, on full transparency, this is only our second year in this program. And for those, for the Dean's Fellows that were here the first time around, wave your hand. Okay. We had questions. We, it was a little bit bumpy. And they were very honest. Um, and we were very grateful for their honesty and made improvements and some changes this year, we hope. And we're gonna ask the same questions again at the end of this year um, and make more changes next year. So yes, we want your applications, but we also want your feedback. So it's not perfect, we're not perfect, but we are trying to build something here. Um, we are excited about that. Um, one of the opportunities that some of our fellows are taking um, a part in, um, we're taking a small group to Tulsa, Oklahoma in May. Um, they're gonna be, um, one, learning about the Tulsa Massacre of 1820, look it up. Um, and then they're also going to be presenting to high school students um, in the Action Institute, helping them become student leader activists. And so this isn't just here. <laughs> we're actually, we want our fellows to go out and be prepared um, to go into their fields and to go do this work beyond. So with that, if you have questions, please step up to the mic and our fellows will respond to you. Some of them have to go to class and you may have to go to class too. And so please just, Exit as you need, but we, we are not finished. There are questions. If you have questions of the deans or us, we are here to answer those questions as well. Thank you. I have just two quick questions. Number one, what are the proceeds from the book sale for the WLP group? Like, what are they going for? And then my second question is, do you guys have an Instagram account, or is it through one of the partners? Like, if we want to share some of the... Yeah, you know, slides that you guys put together and get it out. If, would you like campus departments to do that? And if so, like, where can we grab this? Where can we pick those up? For the book sale, we're working with Beacon Hill Books and Cafe. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're we're just outsourcing their books. They're going to take back see. all of the proceeds. As for the flyers and everything, yes, um, we have made flyers in various. Our advertising team has made flyers and other posters for the event. We don't have an Instagram right now. It's something that we've talked about a little bit. Um, but you'll be seeing those around campus soon enough. So if you see those, please feel free to repost. I know that the WLP and DMA stuff is already out, and the BMA, I mean the PA stuff is going to be out really soon. There is a post on the OISA, International yes. Student Affairs, already. So if you want to post it right now, you can find it there. Thank you. I also wanted to add, if you guys have any questions or like if you don't leave here with a question today, feel free to contact us. We now have an official email. And now that I know that y'all want an Instagram account, a quick Instagram account, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Um, so feel free to contact us at soadeansfellows at emerson.edu with any questions about any of the festivals, and we'll be sure to get back to you promptly. I have a question. Hey, Melody. Hi, girl. First of all, I just want to say I'm so proud of y'all. Like seeing some of my friends who are individuals of color just doing the damn thing, excuse my French. Um, like, I'm really, really proud of y'all, and it makes me so happy to see that this work is actually happening. Um, like, 
I don't remember what her name is, but the work is not perfect, but it's, I'm just happy to see that it's happening. Um, I did have a question about like, say you were a student, I don't know me, um, who <laughs> were like thinking about like what ways to get involved on campus that allow not only yourself to feel the impact of the work, but also those behind you to feel that work, like the freshmen and the sophomores. Um, and I feel like I've seen a lot of things here on Emerson campus that are like saying they're doing the work, but they're not actually doing the work. And so it's been a little discouraging, as I'm sure you know, but to see this manifestation is like beautiful. So what advice would you have for a student like me who's like trying to source that a little bit better? Um, okay, oh, I can speak to this a little bit. Um, so one thing that were, we talked about for at least a school of communications, oh, stand up. Um, so we were talking about some of our projects today, but in addition, we're also trying to, for example, at least for school of comms, like create some type of event that is like really working with um, connecting people in their student of color pre-orientation when they first get here to faculty of color, to their comm professors that are gonna be allies, to some of these professors that we're highlighting here through that recognition. So I think um, just in terms of like talking about um, connecting and like helping those people like that are coming and like new to Emerson, obviously like one thing, definitely like being an orientation leader and helping with like a student of color pre-orientation, joining the fellowship and you know saying what are we going to do to help these freshmen and helping to create a project that is specifically driven to help incoming students. And also I think just, you know, in general, we all can work on finding ways to make sure that we're like really strengthening the community, especially for the younger um, Emersonians who are new and probably feel a little bit lost. Um, because I think there's a lot of work that we can, that can be done to make sure that that community and like is really together. And um, yeah, that's definitely something we wanna continue to work on. Thank you for that, Marissa. I'd also like to add that, like, although these events are, like, the inception of these events is this year, we would like to, like, make these annual events, like, based off of the type of um, involvement and engagement that we see on campus. Like, if we have faces and bodies there, there's no reason why we shouldn't continue this work into the next year. The fellows will be here next year, and so if this is what students like, and if that's what they want, that's what they respond to, I feel like that's you know, mm -hmm. enough reason to keep that work going. Um, so in terms of freshmen and new Emersonians that are coming in, um, we would like to have this opportunity available for them as well when they enter into the Emerson College community. And also for these events, like anyone in Emerson is allowed to apply. You can be a senior, you can be a junior, you can be a freshman. Even if you don't even have a film like attached to your name, we want to be able to make sure that you have the resources and the space to, as you build your film out, not filmography. Hold on, is it filmography? Filmography? Yeah. Filmography? Oh my god, wait, film school term, man. Um, as you build your filmography, your portfolios, you know, we want to give you space to showcase that work um, because we know how sometimes it can be overlooked or sometimes the criteria of film festivals and other, you know, opportunities may not be um, completely available and eligible for us. Um, there's no, there's nothing here that hinders students from applying, so um, we want to make sure that they can engage and network also during those events um, as much as possible. Hello. Hey. I'm Kaylin. I work in student affairs on staff here. Um, first of all, amazing job. That was wonderful. And yeah, I'll echo that. This is just some really great stuff going on, and I think it's great, and everyone's going to have a great time. <laughs> Um, but I'm wondering, just because I work one-on-one -on -one with students, um, and if I feel like they might find community with what you're doing, what can I say logistically speaking? Like, how often do you meet? What are meetings typically like? Just what can they expect if they want to join you all? Yeah, so we as fellows, we meet, I think, every other week. Uh, we meet in the Student Engagement Lab on Fridays from 12 to 2 or 12 to 3, something like that. Uh, and we really just use that time to work with each other, brainstorm, catch up, kind of build out goals and objectives for the following weeks or months, because event planning takes time. Uh, and then we all meet together, School of Arts and School of Comms, twice a month in 172. Um, and we also use that time to speak with our deans, speak with Taikisha, Sam, and Tony, and just kind of give each other updates. So uh, that's about the frequency of our meetings. 
Um, also, like to add on to that, so like for comms, we also were having weekly meetings with um, uh, doc, like Brent Ardeen, and he we were that's where we got to like really work on our projects. So there's definitely like time for individual like here like this is our group meeting, and so for us that was like once a week just for about like six weeks while we were really like getting the project um, going. But then we also have the meetings where we would meet all together, and that also included sometimes like workshops um, and also we have the opportunity to have one-on-ones with either Taikisha, Sam or Tony which has been like really amazing and that's like very individualized where we're just like talking about like okay what's going on like how's your life like do you feel prepared for like what you're going to do next so I would say it ranges but it's not like a huge commitment and I would also say that it's one of those things that you're really just going to love what you're doing and you're going to get such good just individualized attention, help, resources, and create a family that it doesn't even feel like a commitment. So, yeah. Yes, um, and to talk about your question about what we do um, and what you can say to students, I feel like we're a group, not because I'm in it or biased, but I, I strongly <laughs> feel this way, but um, I think we're a group that takes initiative. You know, on campus there have been places, spaces held where you can go talk about um, your experience on campus and the things that you don't like, but then afterwards what happens? Nothing, you vent, and then this, this things continue to happen. But in this group, what we do is we talk about that, but also think about the greater picture. Okay, so what can we do to eliminate that? Okay, so you have that idea, let's work in that. Okay, so that idea didn't work, so let's do this. So um, yeah, we're a group of action. We really take action because we really want to see that change, and we only have four years here. So there's so much that we can do, but within this group, we're really trying to enforce um, community engagement, really enforce um, that change that really needs to happen. And it won't happen overnight, but I'm really proud of us. We have grown so much, so yeah. And really quick, just to say one more thing about that, like we're trying to change for like us in this four years, but I think something we also talked about at the beginning of the fellowship is like, we're also trying to keep this change so like as they were saying about like making these annual events and just creating as many things as possible that we can just continue to have on past our four years so that there's new people that maybe won't have to experience some of the things that some of um, us did. Also they feed us. <laughs> I just would like to note that. School of Arts and School of Comedy, we don't do empty stomachs. So yeah, just expect a meal. <laughs> space um, safely and you know if you need a snack or a restroom or whatever also um, and I apologize that I didn't say this at the beginning um, it's all of our deans this last year we didn't have a ton of applicants from the Institute if any I don't remember and so the Marlboro Institute is a part of this we were we had some um, applicants in our first year we didn't in our second year so if you are a Marlboro Institute student or you have friends who are, and you think, oh, I only heard from the School of Common School of the Arts. The reason why is because we didn't have applicants. So apply. <laughs> Tell them about it. Um, and so it is, it is open to undergraduates. Um, it is a $3,000 um, fellowship. Um, and as you, can, as you have heard, there's lots of things that the students um, are doing. Um, and we have a good time um, working with them. So thank you so much. Um, the teaching. The application's open on Monday, and the deadline is March the 6th. Um, the teaching continues, so please join us this evening at 7 p.m. in the Simmel Theater for the Charles Reese performance um, on the life of uh, James Baldwin. Um, and then tomorrow morning, we're kicking off at 9.30 with our keynote actress, activist, extraordinaire, Anna Devere Smith. Woo! Thank you.